Hello, um, thanks for watching this short slideshow on the Spartan and other non Athenian, Athenian triremes. Um, this is mainly about asking questions brought on by some research that I've done for a book. Video. We're going to talk about uh, the Athenian trireme and its differences from other triremes and try and work out how those other triremes worked. So, and the principal problem with that was boarding tactics. And that comes to the questions of how did you board another trireme and how did you get uh, rid of problems with the oars? The Athenian trireme, of course, is well known um, as being a fast light vessel um, that was designed for ramming and uh, utilized a skilled crews, um, but had very few marines, only 10 to 14 marines and maybe three or four archers. On the other hand, uh, Athenian enemies um, particularly after the expedition to Sicily, um, had heavier triremes. Um, so the uh, Syracusans um, made their bows stronger so they could ram head on, which meant they didn't have to do the complicated maneuvers required by the Athenian tactics and meant they could take on the Athenian ships head on in the confined waters of the Bay of Syracuse. Um, however, it doesn't explain how boarding tactics worked and why it was still necessary to board a ship even after you rammed it. Um, the uh, other triremes, the uh, Spartans, the Corinthians, the Persians are mentioned as having as many as 40 Marines. So four times as many as the Athenians. Their ships being heavier would have been slower and less manoeuvrable, which presumably made them more likely to be rammed. So why did they do this? And how did they do it? So here you can see how you board a trireme while it's in port. You, uh, they have a ramp runs from the dock. So you uh, normally you get on a trireme on a ramp from the rear. Um, but uh, does this explain what happened at uh, what may have been the Battle of Nidos, uh, where Iphicrates, the, who was later a famous Athenian general, um, is said to have carried an enemy captain in full armour from the enemy ship to his own. Now, why he did this, they don't say. The important question is, how did he do it? Um, if there was a significant gap between the two ships, then surely that was impossible. Uh, it would also be impossible for him to do it if he had to climb up the side of his other ship. Um, so, was there a boarding ramp? Um, was there... Um, was it because the two ships were side by side? Uh, was it because the ship uh, had rammed the enemy ship and you're able to climb over the, the front of the ship? But um, when you look at the front of a trireme, it really doesn't look like a suitable place in which to carry a fully armoured enemy over the top of. Um, and so the question remains, how was it done? So when we come to uh, boarding tactics, which were supposed to be emphasized by these non-Athenian ships, we first of all come to uh, getting on and off a trireme, the difficulties with that, and then also having to cope with the fact that there's a large amount of ore space between the ships. So, as I said before, uh, 
to get on and off a trireme, you normally get on at the back, um, whereas a ramming option normally is thought of being from the front. So from the back, you'd normally use a ladder. And you can see how here how high the water could be from the deck, uh, about 2.5, 2.15 metres. The question is, uh, was the ladder kept on board? And you can only suppose it was, because otherwise, how do they get off the ship when they um, came into a beach? And if they did that, did they make use of the ladder, or are there maybe two ladders, one on each side, um, as a boarding ramp? So here we can watch um, how what it was like to jump from the ship onto what may, may count to be, say, some floating wreckage. Um, it's not that easy to do. But what is difficult is getting back on the ship. So one of the men climbed in through the oar ports. The other one tries to climb up the side and he has to be helped. Uh, so, if you were f fighting to get on the ship, that procedure, um, and so the problem is with galleys is that there's these oars sticking out the sides, and which makes it impossible to have a um, age of sail type boarding action where the two ships come alongside each other. Um, the oars were about four metres long and about two thirds of them stuck out of the ship. So that means there was at least six metres between two galleys side by side, which makes it impossible to jump the distance, uh, if you're, especially if you're in full armour. Um, so then the question is, was it possible to ship the oars? Um, to narrow the distance. Um, well, there's this interesting video here that showed the um, ship under sail, and they don't ship the oars then, even though uh, it would only take a, you know, the odd wave to catch the oars, and then that would slow the whole ship down again. So um, it must not be that easy to ship the oars, especially in the way that you'd need to to um, quickly do it for a boarding action. Um, the problem being, of course, that with the oars um, being about four metres long and the ship being 5.2 metres wide, um, when you pull the oar in, it's obviously going to stick into the um, uh, row of benches on the other side of the ship. Um, and it's going to make it difficult for the people sitting there. The oars had leather sleeves on the outside, so they could not be pulled all the way in, and normally they were pushed in from the outside. So let's have a look at that. So this is what the oars look like when they, before the crew got on the ship. Um, this is the early version of the Trireme Olympias which had square oars. Um, and you can see that the blade sticks out, but the rest of the oar can be kept inside. However, this causes problems for the crew as they get on the ship because they have to clamber over the oars. And then when they try and sit down, all the oars are sticking out in between everything else, making it difficult for them to do everything else until they um, unship the oars. So, there are two, or really three, possible courses of action. The first course of action is the one that most people think happened, which is that they rammed the ship, then they board it. Um, the second one is um, that they rammed the ship from the front, then boarded it. And the third one is they sheared away the enemy's ship's oars on one side, and then came along the enemy ship and boarded it just like in the Age of Sail. Um, 
So this last option is the is the one I'd like to explore because it seems to be the most interesting one, even though it's the most unlikely. Uh, here we have a picture of the uh, conventional view, the um, galley rams the side of the other galley, and then there's a boarding action. The question is why? If ramming was sufficient, which it must have been for the Athenians, um, because the Athenians only had 10 or so Marines, why was it necessary? To also have a boarding action in which your ship could be entangled with the enemy ship and which the Athenians apparently didn't do they they ran the ship and then they um, then they uh, reversed the ship off so um, if you ram the ship um, you could have things happening like your own troops falling off your ship because of the impact force, um, because there were no railings on the side of your ship to keep them on, so your own ships had to sit down. There was actually nowhere for the marines to sit um, except on top of the desk, uh, deck rather. Um, the other disadvantage is uh, if you ram this way and then try and board, you've got to only the small frontage of the front of your ship from which to attack from, uh, which means you're unable to properly make use of your advantage in numbers. Um, this also requires that you have a skilled crew because you've still got to ram the ship from the side. As seen in this picture. So then we have the Syracusan solution, which is ram head on. Um, well, uh, again, why do you, if you, if this, this is likely to cause severe damage to the enemy ship, it's probably going to sink. So why do you need to do a boarding action? Um, and uh, I mean, is, is the other Marines just an insurance policy or something? Uh, and if you ram them head on, as I said, it's you know they're going to seriously damage the enemy's ship. They're going to sink, and your your trip's going to be on a sinking ship, and your ship's going to be stuck into a sinking ship. Um, and the area that you can attack from and onto is even smaller than the other way around if you're using your marines. So it's going to make the defender's job even easier against a boarding action. Apparently it worked. So um, in more open waters, we maybe there's another solution. Um, so the first thing you do in this case would be uh, you approach the enemy ship from the opposite direction, because otherwise they'd get away from you. Um, and you'd ship the oars on one side of your ship, the, the side closest to the enemy. That's to protect your own oars. You would shear off the oars on that side of the enemy ship, and then you would board it along the side um, in a conventional boarding type action. This would allow you to use your 40 marines to your advantage. Um, the problems with this are, of course, that uh, the two ships may keep moving and you might have to keep uh, going around again. You, know, you go around, come back, and then do the board. Um, and but um, it's still probably easier for an, a less trained crew to do because they only have to point at the enemy ship and then run along its side. Um, and uh, there's no complicated trying to um, turn the ship around and then hit it in the side or anything like that. Uh, so what do you think? Um, do you think uh, that a, that the boarding action 
was done by ramming the ship and then jumping on board the other ship and then but why did they do that um, you know was it because the the ram ship was continued to float um, and could be dragged back to harbor so you um, had to make sure that um, that didn't happen or that it was your own side that did it by having a boiling action after ramming it um, but then what did the Athenians do? Why didn't they have lots of um, uh, marines? Did they ram a ship twice or something? Um, so uh, how do you think a boarding action was done? Um, I'm very interested to hear. And uh, most of the pictures have been from a BBC a documentary that's available on YouTube. I'm not an expert on the um, uh, naval warfare, and that's why I'm asking people to ask this question. But um, I would like you to have a look at my book on um, light troops and uh, the Thracians. Um, which is called The Gods of Battle. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. You'll find it's got a lot of original uh, material in it and um, you won't find it anywhere else. So, um, thanks for watching.